Medical industry, like any other industry, has its own jargon. If you have come across terms in your quality management system that cause a lot of confusion and problems in implementation, you are not alone. Hello and welcome. I'm Naveen Agarwal and I help medical companies build safe products through a quality management system that is not only compliant, but also agile and focused on the needs of patients and doctors. So call me or email me with your questions and let me know how I can help you. This video is one out of the series of videos I have made that talk about these important terms. They go into a little bit of detail about what those terms mean and the points of confusion that I have seen in my experience. The focus in this video is on terms related to risk management system. And if you have implemented ISO 14971 in your quality management system for risk, you are already familiar with three key terms, hazard, harm, and hazardous situation. The focus of this video is going to be on hazardous situation. Check out other videos on my channel about harm and hazard. Keep in mind that they are all interrelated. So we need to understand them individually but also their relationship with each other. ISO 14971 defines a hazardous situation as a circumstance that exposes people, environment, or property to one or more hazards. A key concept to understand for hazardous situation is foreseeable sequence of events. Usually there is a trigger event that cascades into more events, one after the other, and it's a collection of those events that create a hazardous situation for a person, environment, or property. Let's illustrate this with a few examples in this slide. Going from left to right, a frayed wire connected to an electrical outlet presents a hazardous situation. If someone touches this wire, they may be exposed to the electrical hazard. Shaking hands with someone who may be sick is another example. A chemical spill a handwritten mark on an arm or a leg prior to surgery, snowy conditions for driving, and expired medical products on the shelf are also examples of hazardous situation. So this is, these are circumstances in which people can be exposed to one or more hazards and that may lead to harm. It is very important to outline the sequence of events that lead to a hazardous situation. For example, a medical device may need to be sterile but because of defective packaging or some other issues during transportation or the way it is used may cause the sterility to break down. That is a hazardous situation and so let's break it down. The hazard in this case is infection causing microorganisms. They may be bacteria, viruses or any other microorganism that can cause an infection. The hazardous situation is caused by the breakdown of defective packaging, maybe not following instructions during use, or any other reason by which the sterility barrier might have been broken. And that is a circumstance in which a patient may be exposed to the hazard of infection causing bacteria or viruses. One common problem I have seen is that typically a clear statement describing these sequence of events and how they lead to a hazardous situation is generally not available. We do a very good job of engineering risk analysis and identifying ways in which a device can fail. We also do a very good job of identifying the harms that can happen to patients and users. It's a connection between the two that is often missing. So what I recommend is that you could make a master table that clearly describes based on your experience and what you have learned from the marketplace, the sequence of events that typically lead to hazardous situations. Now it takes a little bit of work to build this document up front, but I call this master table one of the foundational documents for your risk management process. It makes life very easy moving forward. In conclusion, two key points to remember. A hazardous situation 
is a circumstance that exposes patients and users to one or more hazards. And the second point is that it's usually triggered by a sequence of events. Finally, we need to be able to clearly link the hazards with hazardous situations by outlining these sequence of events. Thank you for your interest and attention. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. Visit my website www.exceedqm.com to learn more about this topic. I have an article on my blog that goes into a lot more detail and offers additional guidance. You can also subscribe to my monthly newsletter. It takes only 15 minutes to keep current with what's going on in our industry and also on the regulatory side. And it's absolutely free.